Andreas, uh, the floor is yours. So hi guys again, thank you, Rick. Very interesting insight in your work at Acid Agma. Um, I would like to start with that first slide I just prepared for you is when, when we do start by scouting under 10 years old or under 11 years old, we already know that there is a school talent pool in football because on the left hand side you see maybe all the young football players by the age of seven so and looking back or, or looking three years later all the young football players by the age of 10 they might be the fastest the strongest the tallest and the most powerful ones or maybe the the most skillful ones and they're all, that that's the left over so all the other kids they're already dropped out, going to different sports, or were benched by the village club teams. So, and by knowing that, we have an already school talent pool in football um, in our area. Um, we could think about turning everything down and preparing the younger kids by the age of six, seven, eight, nine to make them better movers, better ball handlers, everything else, but we don't have the money put in to, 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 um, to do that. So therefore we look at a nice um, side or, or the good effect is following. If you see that, it's just an easy slide to, to get to know the biological age and by watching this slide before, if we know on the right side, we have only these players over, it's a natural, um, we say identification because of the youngest, they are born in the fourth quarter and maybe late matured as Rick um, uh, sh showed up earlier, is if they are over, we know these are already the good guys and the best ones, the talented ones of the fourth quarter and maybe late matured, because they're still playing soccer on a, diff, on, a uh, on a specific level. So every, everybody's talking about that the, uh, the relative age effect is worse. And yes, that's true because we are losing a lot of good players with high potential. But on the other hand side, we know that the late matured and late born um, that's a natural uh, identification, but that's the, the, left, the best they're left over. And we do have a problem in the older ones. And as Rick showed with the, with the oldest um, kid or with the, with the biggest kid, he might be average, but still good enough. So we have a lot of kids that are born in the first quarter and the second quarter that might be early matured or average normal matured. And they are they still in in the program and still in soccer or in football, um, but they're only average. So what we then try is how to see potential for our scouts is um, we for sure what we can see is the chronological age, the birthday. Um, is he born late or early in the year? Then there are some signs even without measuring um, about the biological maturity. Um, is, is there a lot of muscles on that little kid? And um, is he grown up high? And so then um, if there's potential that might be late, if it's only performance, if you look at performance, it might be early. So you give it a different mark for that kid. Then we try to find out the football age so there's a lot of potential if the football age is young. What I do mean is if that kid is 10 or 11 years old, but just playing two or three years in soccer, he has a young football age compared to the other one. They might be an old football age. They started by the age of five or his parent. His dad was a soccer coach early and he's just playing since six years. So that would be a marker for, yes, it's more performance, less potential, maybe. And we, we try to find out the amount of training um, 
and then I mean the specific training of soccer. Has he maybe twice a week training sessions with a quality of training in his uh, village club with um, less talented or less good players? Uh, that would be an indicator for there's more potential to grow. And on the other hand side, if the training amount is already high because he comes from a from another performance youth performance center with three or four times training and a good good coach and a good good training group, that would be a good quality of training. That speaks for he's more on the performance side, and it's natural that he performs better than this guy. But the potential on this guy might be um, higher. And the same one is about the specification. So if that guy has only been trained in soccer and is kind of like a spe specialist in soccer already by the age of 9, 10, 11, or 12, the performance might be high, but the potential might be low. And the other way around about the diversification of the, um, the sports, if a kid has done not only soccer, maybe he... Uh, is, is doing um, fighting or gymnastics or dancing or whatever he's doing or playing basketball or skiing um, and he has a high score on that that might be a indicator for for a higher potential than the other way around and what we then try is when we are having them with us not only creating a little games where they're equal numbered and, and where the, the stronger kids um, are just showing off more. We do little overload games like 2v1s on the one side, 3v2s on the other side and playing 5v5, 7v7 um, on a wider pitch where even this guy um, can show his skills, can show his game intelligence, can show his decision making, making, and that's very subjective. But it's on a, on my in my opinion, it's better um, to see when to dribble, when to pass. Um, on the other hand, th these guys tend to make it by themselves, to, just to show up because they're faster, but they don't see. Is the pass the better option or is the dribbling the better option? They always choose the dribbling because it's no problem to for them to pass it. And then now, now that you guys know how we see the potential on the performance side, we I just brought you a little slide where yeah, for sure a guy who's performing well in early age and has potential, that's a one in a million guy uh, we are looking for. But we might have this guy where all the clubs are going to the go-to guys. And you know, but we have this little section, I, I just call them the raw diamonds because the performance might be not that high in this moment, but the potential is up high. So maybe um, not every scout has, has, this, has these guys on the, on the map. Uh, so if you find someone of these, that's quite interesting. And I call them the change of perspective. And that uh, Rick showed this very nicely is if you have this little guy and, and he shows some good skills, technique wise, game intelligence wise, this decision making wise, uh, fighting wise, um, you, you just have to try to put them in a different perspective because um, does he play on the, on the right game, on the right pitch size? Could, could he be more effective if he would play with younger teams? And that, that is hard to compare. But here might be, you, you might have players by the age 9, 10, 11, 12, they still can make it during a good development program. Yeah, on the other hand, we have here, these guys might won't, won't make it at the end. These guys maybe as well. And then you here have a, a screaming performer who every scout sees and have on his map and bring it. But if there's no potential, I'd rather go for a raw diamond before I, I just have too many screaming performs. So, and if, if we have them here and then uh, it's maybe close to that, what, what Rick is doing. Um, we do measure it at Stuttgart. If, if we have he, the kids here, we have three different types of measurement because we still don't know which is the, 
best one and gives us the, 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 the exact outcome. So we try to have three different measurings that decrease um, that we are wrong, but we still could be wrong. So after that, we have the P1, P2, P3 guys, like Rick showed, the early matured, the normal matured, and the late matured. And we are mixing age groups. They do get a different training. Um, we give this a coach to change their mindset. Therefore, we have rolling uh, qualifying dates to put that normal guy, the normal uh, matured guy in a group with same aged and see, is he still the best one? Then we put him in a group where he is biological aged, the youngest to see if he can still compete. Then we, we put him in a group where he's maybe in the one of the oldest, if he has some leadership skills and um, is taking responsibility. So, and still we don't know if this gives us just more knowledge uh, that we can talk about, but we think we, we can put the players then in their comfort zones and we easily can put them out of their comfort zones and just give them different roles during sessions or during games. Yeah, that's a short overview to the very interesting topic.